Grayson, come on over here, son. Come on, you see. Scott Woods, his partner Chelsea, and their two kids are getting ready for the July 12th holiday, an annual Protestant commemoration of a centuries-old battle for the British crown. We're best friends, we'll do a lot of things together, so in this band it's more so for the family, as you can tell, Grayson loves the music as well. It's about celebrating your culture, uh, your identity. This year, the 12th has been especially tense. Britain's decision to leave the European Union has helped rekindle divisions in segregated cities like Belfast, which is split between nationalists, mainly Catholics who feel closer to the Republic of Ireland, and unionists like Scott and Chelsea, who want to remain part of the United Kingdom. What is your identity? I would class myself as British, loyalist, uh, loyal to the Queen, loyal to the Crown. We've heard that tensions are a bit higher this year, that this July 12th, means something different than previous years. What do you think about that? In a way, yes. There is, there's a lot of people that are stirring up tensions. I identify myself as British. And me personally, I feel that that's being taken away from me. And the, the, a lot of people feel the same. So there is, there is a, a, a lot of anger about it at the minute. Brexit should have changed the border between Northern Ireland, part of the UK, and the Republic of Ireland, an EU member. But cooperation between the two sides was a big part of the 1998 Good Friday Agreement that ended 30 years of conflict. The UK and the EU agreed to keeping the land border on the island of Ireland open and instead creating a de facto sea border for goods between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. That's caused considerable controversy. And already the UK has indicated it wants to amend the so-called Northern Ireland Protocol, something the EU says it won't allow. Do you feel like there is a wedge being yeah, put in the middle of your identity right now by this yeah. Irish sea border? I do it 100%. Uh, it's basically split us off from the UK. That's, that's what it's done. If you put a border down the middle of Chicago, it's dividing you from the other half of Chicago. Do you know what I mean? So that's exactly what it's done. It's, 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 I think it's the start of, of trying to take us away from the United Kingdom. Earlier this year, rioting broke out in unionist communities angry about the terms of Brexit and the growing power of nationalists. It was the worst unrest in Northern Ireland in a decade, and it's added extra tension to this year's July 12th. One of the holiday's traditions is huge bonfires, which are contentious because the towers are covered with anti-Catholic and anti-Irish symbols before being burned in Protestant areas across the country. In the unionist community of Tigers Bay, a bonfire has been built close to a large wall that separates them from the predominantly Catholic community of New Lodge. Here we have uh, a result of the attacks that have happened on this community over the past you know, number of weeks and not months, um, where a golf ball was launched from the top of the bonfire site that we can see here and ricocheted off the, the tin hut we were assuming and, and hit the window. They're just hitting golf balls. Yeah, they were, they were on top of the bonfire. We have videos of it. They're on top of the bonfire and the young fella with the thing, and I have to say, um, he knew how to use the club. We've been hearing from, from folks in unionist communities who say that their culture is under attack, that they're not being allowed to celebrate their traditions. What would you say to those folks who say that? I would say that they are allowed to celebrate their culture. They are allowed to have their bonfires. There's hundreds, of, if not thousands, of bonfires across the north of Ireland. This one is in the wrong place. JJ McGee is a member of Sinn Féin, the largest nationalist party in Northern Ireland. He believes the unionist leadership made a mistake by supporting Brexit. Do you think unionists, if they start to see Northern Ireland moving closer to a union with Dublin, they're going to allow for that to happen? Well, yeah, that, I, I hope, hopefully, yes. Hopefully, conflict is a thing of the past in Ireland. And, you know, I do want to see the gun brought into politics ever again in Ireland. Um, we have lost far too much. Do you think that explains the fear then in unionist communities? You know, parties like Sinn Féin are getting more popular. The Catholic population is increasing in Northern Ireland. Do you think unionists feel like they're losing out? I think they have a fear. They have a fear of United Ireland, which is unfounded, you know, because their fear of United Ireland is not my vision of United Ireland. We want to debate on a new Ireland, so we do. We can talk about what is good for both communities and all communities, not just, and it's not about religion, this is about people. Anger among unionists is not only directed at nationalists, but also their own political leadership. The DUP is the largest unionist party in Northern Ireland, 
and was a fierce supporter of Brexit. There's been a fragile peace here in Northern Ireland since the late 90s. Why would you risk inflaming tensions by supporting something like Brexit? The peace process was all about how we deal internally with the tensions within Northern Ireland about our membership of the United Kingdom. The European Union hardly featured in the peace agreements. There's this myth going around that somehow or other Brexit uh, was against the peace process and the peace agreements. It wasn't because the Good Friday Agreement was all about our internal relationships within the United Kingdom. Is Britain's time in Northern Ireland coming to an end as a result of Brexit? No, I don't think it is. Um, you know, the, the, the government is now, of course, trying to undo the damage which it has done. And Boris Johnson's getting into all kinds of trouble about breaking international agreements, which he has made quite clear he will. You have no regret for supporting Brexit? No, I have Just not. If we were to campaign for Brexit tomorrow, again, I would campaign for it. But I would make jolly well sure that the deal that was done included Northern Ireland the next time. Just behind me is a massive tower of wood pallets that has been set ablaze. This bonfire commemorates a battle over 300 years old when a Protestant king defeated a Catholic one in battle. I think that commemorating events like this that happened so long ago prevent Northern Ireland from progressing, from moving forward. It's like every other culture in the world. The problem here is obviously we had the 30 years of conflict. I think for us to move forward, people need to accept each other and move forward together. There are some messages that we've seen on this bonfire and others that target Catholics. Why not celebrate July 12th without those kind of derogatory messages? I agree, but on both sides of the community that happens, so that's not a one-sided affair. It happens to both. Should it happen? No, it shouldn't. Republicans have told us that they've never felt closer to their goal as they do now. Do you see yourself ever potentially living in a united Ireland? I personally do, yes, I can see it. And do you think that's a possibility? I can see it in my lifetime, yes, I do think can it you? is a, a possibility. I don't want a united Ireland, I am, I am British, I am part of the UK. But, but, but not, not only that, uh, I think if we were pushed in the united Ireland without the majority consent, consent of, the, of our community, it will lead to violence. If you look at history, anybody that feels oppressed always defends themselves. And that's what way people feel. They feel like they're being attacked. They feel like their culture's being attacked, their identity's being attacked, their British Britishness is being attacked. So it's an automatic reaction to, to react to that. And could that, could that be violence? Possibly. So this is your shirt, this is his band shirt. Uh -huh. This is what they wear. And then this is his band hat. Um, Grayson plays the cymbals. So he has, and Kayla plays the flute. Is that part of the culture here in Northern Ireland that kids join bands like this from a young age? Um, I teach my kids first and foremost, they're loyalists because they're loyalists because of their background and where they come from and their culture and their heritage and this here falls into it, being part of the band. It's not about to promote hatred. If they don't want to walk in the band, they don't They don't walk. There's times where Kayla would be like, don't want to walk today, and that's fine. I noticed that you do see similarities with how the neighborhoods look on either side of the divide, yeah, but there yeah. is very much that divide in between them. Yeah, 100%. Like, I would educate my kids. Um, Catholics are the same as us. We don't hate Catholics. Um, if they have Catholic friends, that's fine. But what they're kind of taught is they respect everybody until they're unrespected. And I, that's one of the things. If we if respect is the big thing here. If we learn to respect each other's culture, we're going to move so much further ahead. You know, even if it meant 
decreasing tensions you wouldn't think about, I don't know, not doing the bonfires or canceling the bonfire, an event like that. that has then that means you're canceling your culture. So no, I, I don't, I, there's no bargain when it comes to your culture. 